Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. It is wonderful to have you here. This is the first installment in a multi-part series where we're going to be looking at some of the new tools for additive manufacturing and design for additive manufacturing that are built right into NX. Stick around, I think you're gonna like it. So we're here at my workstation and the tool that we're going to be looking at today is lattice structures. We're going to be looking at creating different types of lattice structures, modifying those structures, and even how we can create our own custom lattice unit cell to create truly unique lattice bodies. So let's jump into it. So I have NX running here and you can see that I've loaded an automotive control arm with uh, the center as a separate body that I've made slightly translucent. So to access the lattice menu, uh, you need to make sure that you have the Design for Additive Manufacturing tab available. If you don't see the DFAM tab, go ahead and right click up in the tab area and make sure that you have Design for Additive Manufacturing checked. Once you've got that, you can jump into the lattice menu. So let's start with the tetrahedron fill. And the first thing it's gonna ask us for is the body that we want to fill with this lattice structure. And we can see that it just pops it in there. We can adjust the maximum rod length. Let's say we can take that down to eight and get a pretty quick preview. We could take that all the way down to five if we wish. And again, these previews happen really quickly. Let's take it back up to 10. We can adjust the rod diameter, of course. I think one looks okay. And the tessellation factor is providing sort of the resolution to the end facet body once these are actually uh, wrapped with the mesh. So this is just a preview of what this mesh is going to look like. So once we hit uh, OK, you see it looks a little bit rough and that's because these are all individual triangles that make up uh, those rods and this entire mesh, uh, this mesh body. So in years past, uh, we would have sort of been, you know, sort of stuck uh, trying to figure out how to work with this, with this mesh body along with the solid body that we still have. Uh, of course, now with convergent modeling, we can actually unite these two geometry types and we can unite them now as one single solid body. So once we hit unite and select OK, those two bodies will unite. We get a little notice down here at the bottom that because one of the input bodies is a facet body that the resulting body will be a facet body uh, entirely. So we just say okay to that. And as you can see, we've got our selection filter set to solid body. And sure enough, we now have one solid body that is, uh, that is now ready to send to our 3D printer. But let's go back into lattice structures. Let's go into unit fill. So you can see as soon as we hit unit fill that we've got a number of different options uh, available. First, of course, we want to select the body. So we're going to go ahead and select that inside body. The next is the cell type. So we can choose the type of geometry that's being used in each one of those cells as it patterns through the body that we just selected. And as we hover over each one, we get a little preview of what that geometry is going to look like. Uh, let's go ahead and use quad diametral. You can see, of course, we can change the, uh, the edge length as before. So let's maybe bump that down to six. We can actually choose to create non-uniform edge lengths as well. Uh, but for this example, let's just go with, with six. That looks okay. And of course, we can, uh, we can also specify the orientation. So if we want to sort of rotate this pattern around, uh, we could shift it this way and make sure that that orientation is gonna be uh, appropriate for this particular application. We can also randomize graph nodes. So you can see there that everything shifts slightly within this deviation that we can specify. Now this is mostly applicable to um, medical device development, 
so not really applicable uh, in, in an automotive control arm, but that functionality is there. And of course, again, we have a uh, rod diameter that we can adjust. Again, I think one millimeter looks all right. We can remove dangling rods at selected surfaces. So we can select these surfaces here and we'll trim these, uh, these rods that are sort of dangling outside that surface. And we can remove disconnected lattice portions as well uh, as this gets tessellated. Uh, I'm gonna leave those unchecked for right now because uh, I'm gonna show you a little trick for dealing with those sorts of situations a little bit further down the road. So let's hit OK. Let's create that mesh. And uh, we're not gonna go through the Unite. Um, I don't think we need to prove that point again, but you can see again that we've created this uh, tessellated mesh that can then be united to the solid body that we have. Now, as product designers, we have to remember that uh, this is a fantastic way to lightweight this part, but if, if this was actually the route that we wanted to go for our product, you also have to remember that this uh, might be a bit pokey when somebody goes to uh, put this on the car on the assembly line or, or needs to service this uh, 100,000 miles down the road. So maybe there's a, there's a different lattice design that we can come up with that might address that. So let's head back into the lattice menu and let's look at surface lattice. All right, so it's telling us that it wants us to select the surfaces. So we're gonna select the surfaces that we want to lattice. So I'm gonna select these upper and lower outside surfaces. You can see we're getting a really nice uniform triangle pattern there. And again, we can change that maximum rod length as we saw earlier. So maybe eight is sort of a happy medium. The rod diameter again. And we see this source for use existing. So it's using the existing surfaces right off of the, uh, the CAD model to draw those triangles. The other option we have is to remesh triangular. And so when we select that, you're gonna see that it actually changes the density of those triangles based on uh, the boundary and a, uh, an angle or curvature that it sees in those surfaces. surfaces. So you're seeing that uh, here where we have a higher curvature, the, the, uh, the triangle rods actually get shorter. So you end up with a more dense triangle pattern here on the inside. And that's set by this sharp edges setting. So if we change this to soft lock, it's actually going to relax those a bit or no lock and it relaxes them and evens them out even more. If we leave that hard lock, again, then we can specify that angular threshold for that setting to take effect. So let's go ahead and hit okay there. I like the way those look. And there's our surface mesh. And if we head back into lattice, we're gonna go ahead and use a, uh, a unit fill for the inside because if we hide the outside piece, we see that uh, you know, we've created these nice surface meshes on the top and bottom, but we've left the outside, or rather the, uh, the inside completely empty. So let's go ahead and fill that in with the quad uh, diametral that we used earlier and go ahead and hit okay. And so now we've got this sort of uh, ice cream sandwich of lattice structure. So we've got our two surfaces on the top and bottom. We've got our uh, quad diametral pattern on the inside. And uh, these two, these three are, are all separate bodies, right? So we need to address that. So, and, and the way that we're going to do that is uh, the command here, connect lattices. So let's go ahead and run that. And we can actually say that that lattice should be connected to that lattice and that lattice there. And now, not only is it going to unite any overlapping or intersecting lattice structures, but it's also creating additional supportive rods uh, based on the maximum checking distance and the number of rods per vertex that we specify here in these, uh, these fields. So if we want to search further, we can actually make more connections that way. If we set that back to four and we change the number of uh, rods per vertex, maybe up to three, we actually end up with a very dense connection, uh, very dense network of additional rods that are being created based on 
the, uh, the connected vertexes between the, uh, the lattice structures. The rod size we can set to variable or fixed. And again, that's based on uh, the input lattice structures that we're selecting. Uh, we can set that to match what we had set before, or we can set that to variable and let the software figure out the best uh, rod diameters to use for those connections. So let's go ahead and run that. And now we have all of our structures connected. And I mentioned before, I was gonna show you how to get rid of some of those disconnected structures. So if we hide that, we can see that some of these rods are just floating out in space. I found that the easiest way to just get rid of those Fence select the whole thing, hit delete, and we bring our lattice structure back nice and clean. And again, we can show the, uh, we can bring our solid body back that's, uh, that we're using for the outside, and we can unite those two and, uh, and send that off to the 3D printer. For unit conformal, I'm actually gonna flip over to another part that I have loaded here. Uh, and we're gonna sort of switch gears uh, from automotive into product design. So here I've got, I don't know what might be, you know, the start of, uh, of a new computer mouse design. And, you know, we've sort of got some uh, sort of an ergonomic shape happening here, uh, complicated sort of freeform surfaces that are uh, where you're, you're gonna be holding onto the mouse. And, and again, we've got, I've, I've set this uh, particular body sort of translucent. Maybe this is sort of a rubbery material that, that makes the mouse easier to, more comfortable to hold onto. And we wanna differentiate this product from the market, of course. And so maybe we're gonna use lattice structures to do that. So again, let's hop into the lattice menu and we're going to choose unit conformal. So it's asking us to select the faces that we want to apply the lattice to. So we're gonna select all these outside faces. There we go. And the parameterization that we're gonna use is automatic. So you can see we get this big old lattice structure hanging off of this mouse and, and you know that really doesn't look that great. But when we start to take this edge length down, maybe let's take it down to two. The other thing I want to do is maybe bring that offset in a little bit. So maybe let's bring that in negative 2.5. So now we've got that structure sort of even with the outside uh, design surface that we had already uh, that we already had in there. And now, instead of um, you know just a uh, just a smooth rubbery surface, maybe now we're using this lattice structure to create a bit of texture. Now, what I want to point out though, is that when we use the automatic parameterization, you know, things look, look kind of cool here, looks okay, but you can see that that pattern sort of starts to break down here in this, in this back corner. And I really just don't like the way that that looks. Let's take a look at cylindrical aligned. And here it's asking us to select a split curve. So I'm gonna select this straight edge there. And you can see now that that pattern is actually conforming to all the curvature of those complex surfaces. And I think that actually looks pretty cool. So now we have this interesting texture happening where, uh, you know, where the user is going to be interacting with the mouse and uh, sort of a different way to think about using lattice structures. So the last thing that I want to show you is how to create your very own personalized cell. So instead of doing it there, let's go ahead and open up a new model. Go back into the unit cell editor and so we get a cube, all right? So the very first thing that we can see is that we can uh, specify our rods by points or existing curves. So this would be where uh, you could actually draw a sketch and that sketch will be projected into this cube that will then be uh, uh, tessellated into whatever unit cell you create. Uh, for this, we're just gonna go uh, by points and it's as simple as selecting endpoints for the rods that you want to create. We can start to create 
our own unit cell. All right, so we have a few other options in here. We can change our uh, grid lines. So if we wanna show our grid, we can actually use this grid as endpoints. So we can create a more complicated rod pattern here using these grids, keeping everything nice and uniform. And if we wanna bump that down maybe to three, we could do that as well. Um, of course, again, we have the ability to change our rod diameter. So let's maybe bump that up to five. And then we can actually preview what that pattern is going to look like with the, uh, with the show pattern checkbox there. So pretty cool. If you wanted to create uh, you know, a little unit cell with, uh, you know, with your initials in it or, uh, or something like that, once that's completed, uh, we can hit close and we do want to save before we exit and we can go ahead and save this as uh, this will save out as an XML file save that as demo and if we hop back into our control arm we can actually use that lattice here so let's bring this back let's hop back into our lattice menu let's do a unit fill Go ahead and select the body. And now instead of the, uh, the quad diametral cell type, we are going to use from file. And then we're going to go ahead and select that XML file that we just created. And let's bring that edge length up so we can see it. And indeed, there's the, uh, there's the cell that we just created. Okay. And here's one uh, that I created a little bit earlier. Like I said, with uh, the curvature based, so you can see there's a little bit of curvature built into that one, uh, just from a, a spline sketch that I made. Very powerful, very easy to use. You know, I hope you check it out, and I hope you like this video. If you want to go ahead and hit subscribe, that would be great because then you'll get notified when the next part of our video series comes out. We're going to be talking about generative design, so stay tuned for that one. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.